My friends, last week I've built this 3D printed AMX50B from Resin Scales. It was quite a new experience dealing with a raw printed kit, especially the subtle yet all present print layers. Yeah, we'll see those or maybe the lack of those at the end of the video, but I want to focus on something completely different. So over the past year or so I focused most of my painting efforts on post shading. It's something I've totally fallen in love with because the technique gives a lot of life and visual interest to the model. However, I learned one thing. If the model looks just right after you're done airbrushing, everything is gonna be completely obliterated with weathering. Take a look at those. Subtle shading on a Yak Panther. Gone. Panzer Grey on a Panzer II. Gone. My favorite post shading job on a T29. Gone! It made me realize that if I want to see some of those airbrush contrasts and textures on a finished model, I probably just have to crank it up to 11, so that's what we'll try now. Oh, yeah, of course. What do you think about my new lip-smacking black background or black ground? <laughs> anyway, the first step is the standard procedure, priming the entire model black. Well, that's what I'd prefer, but this is a huge model and my supply of black surface primer was running low. It only lasted for the turret, lower hull and running gear, so I had to finish the rest with a dark brown primer. I mean, I've used both in the past, so at least we'll now see how each one affects the top color. Maybe it'll provide some subtle contrast between the hull and the turret. In other news, I've recently bought myself this label printer and it's one of the best things ever. <laughs> Especially when you like making your own paint mixes and sharpies don't really cut it, you know. This, my friends, is an elevated workbench existence. My first idea about this extreme approach was the base coat. With all of my previous models, I covered the entire surface with a solid coat of dark base color, except, you know, some of the most shadowed places such as behind the road wheels or inside of the air intakes. I kinda got this idea when I was painting figures for my previous diorama. There I used a black and white pre-shading and the base colors were applied as glazes. I'm not a huge fan of pre-shading on armor models, so I was thinking about how I could take that concept and turn it into post-shading that would not only provide contrast, but also some, you know, visual texture. Well, this is what I've come up with, and would you look at it, it makes the color of the primer a relevant part of the painting process. It's not just whatever primer that only unifies the different materials of the model. This could also help with naturally bright colors, such as German dark yellow for example. This way it can be applied randomly and the surface will be dark enough for additional shading. As always, the next obvious step for me is to outline every detail with a dark color. In some cases I was able to use a darker version of the base coat, for example with olive drab or panzer grey, but here I didn't have any darker version of the so-called boring French green, so I went with my trusty grime color. For me it's the most important part of the entire process, because it breaks the model down into individual segments and suddenly the surface is more readable so to say. It's very similar to what we often see with pre-shading. Basically, it's technically the same thing, but it's done after the base coat, hence the post, not the pre-shading, right? Needless to say, depending on your airbrush skills, it can look amazing, or truly awful, mine is more of the latter, but it's not a big deal at all, because we still have multiple upcoming layers. From now on, I'll be using the French green mixture with more and more buff added to make it lighter. Mixing ratios are not important with post shading, because ultimately the goal is to make each layer significantly lighter than the previous one. The application is now the same as with all my previous attempts, always in this squiggly, cloudy pattern. But it's the uneven base coat that makes the biggest difference now, because instead of a smooth, subtle finish, the surface is becoming more textured. 
Also, I often refer to this first layer as a cleanup phase, because I can easily tone down the outline details or completely erase mistakes and paint sputters. Side note about paint accuracy. I know next to nothing about post-war French armor, so the color is probably completely off. But honestly, it wasn't the primary goal for this project. I was more concerned about the technique itself. And yeah, it's indeed easier to experiment with subjects you're more familiar with. In my case, it would be Soviet armor. So, here's the cleanup stage completed, and so far there's texture and contrast. I think this would be already okay, and weathering would tone it down to a reasonably interesting finish, but I'll now add some gradients and some more highlights. I used two additional layers of lighter paint, and the process is always the same, it just covers smaller and smaller areas each time. It also made me think about another problem. What is enough, or when is it too much? This is of course completely about personal taste, but as I thought about it, I realized that I always, or at least most of the time, like to go as far as the paint will allow me. <laughs> For example, on this model, I kept adding buff to the base color until the green was starting to turn, well, into buff. <laughs> but of course, I used that only on the most highlighted details. This is something I also like to do on figures, so again, it's like these two disciplines are converging. At least I used to think that each discipline of modeling exists in its own bubble, with, you know, specific techniques and approaches. But it's quite the opposite. Learning how to paint figures gave me some ideas, and while I'm not using the exact same techniques, which would be kinda impossible in my opinion, it's the approach to the whole painting thing. <laughs> After all, the whole post-shading method comes from aircraft modeling. Armor modelers usually go for color modulation or some simple zenith lighting. So yeah, this is as far as the paint allowed me to go, because adding more buff would mean post-shading would turn into pre-dusting, and that wouldn't be very cool. But this is what I was hoping for, a base coat where I won't be afraid to apply too many weathering effects. Another experiment thing of sorts <laughs> were the decals. These are leftovers from my S35 Samua. Again, nothing fancy, but I guess it'll do the job. But a lot of you gave me feedback about my markings looking too clean on these post-shaded models. Well, the best thing I could come up with is a very subtle overspray with an extremely diluted base color. It's not really post-shading, it's more like a filter, but ultimately, I guess it's better than nothing. <laughs> it's just an experiment, though. And the reason I added so much gloss varnish into the paint? Well, it's pretty smoother, it's also easier to apply in translucent layers, but most importantly, the model doesn't turn dark once it's sealed with the final varnish, in my case satin. Spraying with flat paints and varnishing them can totally ruin the post-shading, which is exactly what happened on my Panzer II, so yeah, that's a little pro tip, always add gloss varnish if you want to seal the paint job afterward. So to sum it up, my goal was to go over the top in hopes the weathering won't completely obliterate the paint job. I think it makes for an interesting model, be it on these close-ups, or when you look at it from a normal viewing distance. More contrast also means the model will look interesting in poor lighting conditions. For example, when I turn off the lights. No. Oh. Okay. Or under strong natural light source. Or maybe not. Ha! <laughs> See? Post shading. <laughs> Okay, my filming is terrible when I don't have studio lights, but my point is that light conditions aren't always perfect. And for example, my display case is also kinda shrouded in shadows. 
and a model with more contrast is gonna look better in those conditions. Again, this is an experiment and we'll see how it turns out once I weather the model, but so far from what I've noticed on my previous models, every subsequent technique tones the post shading down. Even something as simple as a pin wash, because the dark oil paint around detail suddenly creates even more contrast, creating an optical illusion of sorts. The post-shaded surface is still gonna be there, but it's gonna be overpowered with an even more noticeable pin wash, if that makes sense. We'll see how this type of paint job will behave under all these different techniques, and if it's gonna look good in the end, but my hopes are pretty high at this moment. Just a quick summary before I go. The dark undercoat is important for this type of job. Applying the base coat unevenly is the foundation for the final textured effect. Outlining the details helps with contrast and it also makes the model more readable. And finally, highlights depending on your personal taste. The gradients and how far you want to take the highlights, that's completely individual for everyone. So I hope this video gave you some new ideas, and if not, at least I hope it was interesting to watch. Thank you my friends for watching, and thank you to my patrons who make this show possible. Hey, would you enjoy a Night Shift magazine or a blog subscription? Well, my Patreon is exactly that. I post there almost every day with photos and updates from all my projects, and I often go more in-depth with these informations and thoughts of mine. <laughs> We can also get in touch through comments, DMs, and emails. I always read and respond to these. I also have these beautiful studio photos, which you can download in full resolution. And while I'm probably gonna switch completely to a black background for videos, photos on a white background are still easier for me. And ultimately, I think they show the model more realistically. I also have small downloadable 3D models and reference pictures for dioramas, so yeah, plenty of stuff. Okay, but now I'm gonna go and weather this over-the-top surface because I'm very, very curious how it's gonna behave. And you, my friends, stay safe, stay awesome, keep building those models, don't just collect them, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!